question will be whether Putin will agree an extension on the, the grain export deal because of some other transaction he wants to do with the Turks. But the, the prospects don't look very good, I'm afraid. Mm. Evidenced by the fact that one other thing the Russians have done recently is just veto a very long running cross border aid operation from Turkey into opposition held parts of Syria, which the Turks attach a lot of importance to. And it's a signal of, you know, Russian unhappiness with other things that Turks are doing that the, the Russians have decided simply to veto that and close down that operation as well. Mm. Russia has been seen practicing seizing ships in the Black Sea, as well as bombarding Ukrainian grain facilities for a fourth day in a row as they try to pressure Western nations to drop sanctions. The UN has warned the attacks could leave millions at risk of hunger and starvation and push food prices up. Sir Mark Lowcock was the United Nations Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator between 2017 and 2021. Uh, Sir Mark, good morning. Good morning. It's good to speak to you this morning. I think, first of all, if we just start with the kind of the, the wider context and indeed the somewhat prolonged nature of this um, recent uh, spike from Russia when it comes to attacking Ukrainian grain exports, uh, what, is your, what is your analysis on why this is happening and indeed the impact it is having? Well, this um, deal that the Russians now want to close down has been running basically for about a year and has been extremely successful, been able to get 32 million tonnes of Ukrainian wheat and maize mostly onto the global grain markets. And um, one of the most important purchases of that grain has been the UN's World Food Programme, who've taken 700,000 tonnes of it, 80% of the wheat they've bought in the last year, to countries threatened right now by famine. Um, so this has been a successful um, arrangement. Of course, it's led to Ukraine getting income from its uh, grain production. So that's one reason why the Russians want to close it down. The, the other thing, though, I think is that the, the, the reason this deal was done initially is because the Russians were under a lot of pressure from countries like Turkey and countries in, in the Middle East and Africa. Um, and um, the Russians are now a bit cross with the Turks over a few recent issues, acquiescing in Sweden joining NATO, the release of some Ukrainian soldiers. I think they'd come from Mariupol and weren't being held in Turkey. So the Russians have taken a number of steps, of which this is one, to express their, uh, their displeasure. And I'm afraid because of um, the uptick in the bombing and the threats to military uh, military threats to ships in the Black Sea. I am not optimistic that this deal will be, um, you, you know, will be rescued this time in the way it has been at various other points in the last year. Mm. In terms of the rescuing, of a potential rescuing or otherwise, of the deal, who could be the key players in that situation? I, I note, noted some comments from um, uh, Rosemary De Carlo, who's the UN's Under Secretary General for Political Affairs, saying threats regarding potential targeting of civilian vessels navigating in the Black Sea waters are unacceptable. So sure, unacceptable, but but what comes next after those words of defiance, I suppose, from the UN? Who, who is at the centre of this in terms of navigating towards some sort of resolution? Well, the person who's making the choices is President Putin, obviously. Who has the wherewithal to bring pressure to bear on him? Well, on this issue... I think there's a limit to Western pressure. Um, I think that probably the single most important person still is President Erdogan in Turkey. And the Turks and Russians still have lots of important ties and relationships. And the question will be whether Putin will agree an extension on the, the grain export deal because of some other transaction he wants to do with the Turks. But the, the prospects don't look very good, I'm mm. afraid evidenced by the fact that one other thing the Russians have done recently is just veto a very long-running cross-border aid operation from Turkey into opposition-held parts of Syria, which the Turks attach a lot of importance to. And it's a signal of, you know, Russian unhappiness with other things that Turks are doing that the, the Russians have decided simply to veto that and close down that operation as well. Mm. It's not unthinkable, is it, in this situation that the whole thing backfires somewhat on Russia? That that those that you, some of those that you've mentioned, you know, Turkey, Middle East, Middle Eastern countries, Africa, uh, African countries, perhaps begin to question 
uh, the strategy here when those are, are the countries that are being affected. Is there, a, is there a scenario here, Sir Mark, where it could backfire on Putin, could backfire on Russia, and actually escalate things into a, I suppose, a wider, a wider geographical way than we have seen up until now? There's no question that lots of countries in the Middle East, Asia and Africa are very unhappy about what's going on. African leaders next week will be in St. Petersburg for an economic summit, um, which Putin is um, hosting. The phone lines will be quite hot at the moment in advance of that. And this topic is going to come up um, at the meeting as well. I think what we'll see is a bit more posturing from the Russians of, well, why don't you let us um, export our grain and our fertilizer, which they claim falsely is subject to sanctions. So we'll, we'll get that sort of posturing. But the truth is, unfortunately, the African countries do not have the kind of hard power or um, ability to um, take other steps that would be damaging to Putin. Uh, so this is really a soft power play from them. And Soft power isn't something that Putin has a huge track record of particularly respecting. Mm. Uh, really interesting to speak to you. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining our programme. Uh, that is Sir Mark Lowcock, who was the United Nations Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator between 2017 and 2021. So all of this coming about, he described Russia expressing displeasure. And that's uh, this is an outworking of that. The seizing, uh, well, practicing seizing ships, attacking ships indeed, and indeed ports around the Black Sea as well. And so the repercussions of this could be really quite far reaching, as well as the uh, sort of obvious repercussions, hunger, starvation, food prices going up. What are the geopolitical um, implications as well? Really interesting to hear from Sir Mark this morning. Thank <laughs> you.